When it comes to stopping drinking alcohol, we're often made to believe that it's some sort of a journey. And that's why we do things like we count the days. Because if the longer that we go without drinking, the more of a non-drinker that we are, surely. Well, the thing is, is I don't think like that. And I believe the decision to become a non-drinker happens in an instant. It's not a journey, it's not a, it's not a challenge, it's not difficult, it's a decision. It's a simple split decision where you cut off all possibilities of failure. That's what I did, and that's what's kept me going for the past 2.5 years. And I literally do mean it was a simple decision. It was like the flick of a finger and I was done. Despite a 10 year roller coaster, despite trying to stop drinking hundreds of times in my life, despite calling myself an alcoholic, it still was a flick of a switch and I was done with alcohol forever. I know that sounds hard to believe. I know you're gonna think, Leon, you've gone crazy. What is this nonsense that you're talking about? So I really do urge you to watch this video because I'm actually gonna be telling you some of the difficult things that you can do to help you lead up to that point when you make a decision. Now, when I say the decision was literally the flick of a finger, there were certain things that I did that led up to that point. And that's what I wanna break down in this video. I wanna break down the things that I did that got me into that state of mind where it was a done deal. So let's get into it. Just before we get into the video, if you want to get access to the free video training showing you how to control your drinking without AA or willpower, click the link in the description. I'll be showing you how to use the mental model called first principles thinking to get control of your drinking. I'll be talking about the five critical mistakes that 90% of drinkers make. And I'll also be sharing the two phases of becoming sober clear. You do not want to miss that training video. It will change your mindset around drinking forever so you can start getting your health, career, confidence and relationships back on track. Click the link in the description for instant access. Now, the very first thing that I did, and this was probably the hardest thing that I ever did, and it was very deep introspection. What I mean by this is I really said to myself, okay, Leon, what you've been doing here just ain't working. This willpower, this calling yourself an alcoholic, giving yourself up to God, hey, listen, it works for some people, wasn't working for me, wasn't a long-term solution for me. So what I really started doing was I really started doing some introspection. I really started questioning everything that I thought that I knew. And I really looked within. I really said to myself, is this for real? Is this for real? Am I going to have to do this for the rest of my life? Am I going to keep going on this roller coaster? Am I going to keep going through the cycle of being a drinker? Am I going to make these mistakes for the rest of my life? Now, these are big, big, deep questions to ask yourself. And a lot of drinkers out there, they just don't want to do that. They don't want to go to that place in their brain. They don't want to go to that gnarly place where it's like, you know, this is pretty messed up. This is hard work. But I did that. I had to do that. I had to go through that pain to get to the other side. I had to ask myself these questions. I had to do the introspection and I really had to say, Leon, are you gonna keep doing this? And I really urge you to do the same thing. And it's hard, listen, it's painful. A lot of us don't wanna do those kind of things. We don't really wanna sit down and start questioning our beliefs, start questioning what the hell is alcohol doing for me? But it's imperative, it's imperative for you to do this if you wanna succeed on your journey. Which leads me to the second point. And what I started doing was I really started questioning society's beliefs. After I'd kind of looked at myself and my own situation and started realizing, you know, that I wasn't an alcoholic, I wasn't weak-willed, I wasn't some loser. Then I started questioning society's beliefs. I started questioning, why does society hold alcohol on such a pedestal? Why is it that every single person that drinks alcohol, they say that it helps them, they say that it adds value. They say that it just does so much good for them. You know, it helps me relax, it calms me down, it gives me a bit of a boost, helps me socialize, gives me confidence when I'm going on a date, whatever. Why do people keep saying this? And this is what I had to understand. The people that tell me, that I should moderate my drinking. The people that tell me just to have one, why do they think having just one drink is normal? I had to question that, I had to figure that out. And what I actually found out was about the conditioning. And basically, we're just conditioned to believe that alcohol is a good thing through sheer repetition, through so many different sources telling us that it's a good thing to drink. From the marketing, the media, seeing famous people drink, seeing wealthy people drink, we start to buy into the idea that drinking a small amount of poison, an addictive drug, is somehow okay. It ain't, there's nothing good about it. Life is so much better when you're free. So just bear that in mind. And I would really encourage you to do the same thing. When you see alcohol on the TV, when you see it in a movie, when a friend comes up to you, he's like, hey, you wanna go for a beer? Whatever it is, I really urge you to just take a minute and question what is going on here? Why do I buy into this? I had to do that. It was so important. Which really leads me into the third point and it kind of brings them together, but I actually did this through using a mental model and it's called first principles thinking. And if you look at the diagram on the screen right now, you can see that what first principles thinking is, is it's going from a position where you're problem drinking. It's basically analyzing all of this information through studying, through reading books, through taking courses, through looking at journals, through watching videos, listening to podcasts, watching documentaries, whatever it takes. And what you do is you just break down all of these component parts until you can put it back together and then see alcohol for what it is. because. 
what's left? Like if you really take away the idea that it's a good thing, the idea that it helps you, the idea that it's nice tasting, all of these things, what's left? Ethanol, a drug, a poison. There's nothing else. Because now you see it without the labels. Now you see it without the marketing. Now you see it without the conditioning. Because all that is left is ethanol. That is all that it is. It's nothing else. We just choose to buy into the idea that it's something different. But it isn't. It's just another drug. And first principles thinking, it's challenging. It takes a lot of time. But when you've done that, when you that's what I mean is I'd gone through these things and then boom, it was a split decision. It was like, oh, why the hell would I want to do that ever again? I'm out. I'm done. I'm retired. My drinking career is over. Adios, see you later. And which leads me to the fourth point. And what I really started doing was when I thought about alcohol, I started analyzing the second and third order consequences. Now, second and third order thinking is another mental model. And this is something that I learned about from one of my mentors. And what you do is you don't look at the first order consequence. So for example, when you drink alcohol, the first order consequence, it might mean that you spend a bunch of money and you wake up hungover, right? What is the second and third order consequences of doing things like that? For example, I uh, lost a, a wallet. I had a Mont Blanc wallet that one of my personal training clients bought for me. It's like a six, $700 wallet. And I lost that wallet when I was hungover. I was hanging out my, I don't want to swear, but you know, I was really, really hungover and I lost this wallet. And then what are the consequences of that? Well, now I'm going to have to spend three days canceling my cards, getting a new driver's license, doing all of this stuff. Because the first order consequence of alcohol is pretty easy to deal with. But then what's the second and third orders, right? What about your kids smelling alcohol on your breath and then your kids growing up and thinking that drinking poison is normal? What about things like that? What about the fact that you missed three workouts this week, you've put on an extra kg of body weight, and when that's prolonged over the next 10 years, just think where that ends up. Because the first order consequences, like I just said, can sometimes not be too much of a problem, but really the consequences add up. So I had to analyze this. I had to realize that it's not just about that day. When I choose to drink alcohol, it's not just about the pain caused around that 24 hour period. It's the pain caused the next week, the next month, the next years ahead. Because that decision to drink ripples. It ripples and it will affect you. It will affect the people around you. It will affect your work. It will affect your health. It pretty much for me affected absolutely everything. Which really leads me to that key point and that key moment. And this is the fifth point of the video and it's to go all in, right? Once you've kind of got yourself into this frame of mind, which I'm talking about right now, you have to commit, right? This is not a question of I'm trying to stop drinking. This is a question of commitment. It's like, I am done. I am finished. I'm not going back there, right? And I'm getting quite... Um, passionate right now because it's really that simple, right? You make the decision to not drink when you see alcohol for what it is. There's no need for it to feel like a struggle because you're done. You've made the decision, you move on. It's that simple. But you've really got to get this message that I keep saying on the channel that alcohol does nothing for you. It can't. It never has. It never will. You know, most people aren't really prepared to do this because they hold on to ideas that alcohol helps them. They just, you know, they might understand the things that I'm saying, yet there's 5% of them that just grasps the, well, one day I could just go back to having a few. Well, one day, you know, at a wedding, I could have a little bit. What happens if I go and fly business class? I'm going to have a glass of champagne. If you hold on to that idea and you don't make an all-in decision, your journey is just not going to be as straightforward. If you can just make the decision the same way that you can make it the decision to brush your teeth in the morning, right? you're not going to waver that decision. If you can do that without alcohol, I'm telling you, it will be the best thing you've ever done. Which leads me to the final point of the video, and it's to truly create a life vision. Once you're into that state of mind, get the vision, right? Start setting the goals. Start writing the goals for your health, for your relationship, for your business and your career, for your finances, for your spirituality. Start setting goals and just start going towards them, okay? You, it doesn't matter how slowly you go towards them, but just take one step every day towards what you really want. Don't let alcohol hold you back, and don't let the idea that stopping drinking should be difficult hold you back as well. Simply decide not to do it and go forward. Go forward for steam ahead. Don't look back. Ignore the people around you telling you just to have one. Ignore the people around you giving off the idea that it's actually a good thing. It ain't a good thing. Get rid of it and move on. Have a great day.